Today, Market Sense introduces a new feature called Your Money. This feature looks at small businesses and personal finance. The aim is to profile the work of small businesses in their particular fields and also share money management tips with our viewers. Well, this week, our reporter Diabo Sito looks at a family-run business and how they're coping in this economic climate. PricewaterhouseCoopers, also known as PwC, says South Africa's family business sector has high ambitions for quick and aggressive growth over the next five years, but only a limited number achieve their very ambitious targets. We all know of at least one family-owned business. This type of business allows the family to put all hands on deck and also pull resources together to ensure success. But it is said that only one in three family businesses make it to the next generation. My name is Diabo Sito with Your Money on Market Sense. Today I'm visiting the Similani family business in the East Rand. This is a business that has been around since the 1980s. It has grown from one generation to the next, serving its community with everyday essentials. But it has not been without its set of challenges, such as increased competition and an evolving consumer. For Sipo Similani, partnering with his siblings and starting business was a natural choice. His journey began as a young man selling door to door. But because he would get mugged often, his older sister decided to buy him a small bike. So I was selling a Polish and roll-ons, house to house. Then I decided to do the, the tech shop. Mm. That's how it started. I remember when my sister bought me a buggy. She gave me 1,000 rand. I bought that uh, buggy. Then the business started to to run because I used to transport people. With that, um, that money that I got from transportation, I used to boost the business. The business has since expanded from just a tuck shop to selling spare parts, selling coal and investing in property. All the siblings say they are hands-on because this is their bread and butter. I was doing my BCom. And then seeing that there are people, they are graduates who are not getting the jobs and things. But I've seen that at, at, at home, we have got this business and the government was telling people that, you know, you can go to businesses and do this. And I sit down and said, no, I've got the brother who's doing this business. And he's saying to, to us, let us do this, let us get this. Even today, just as you have seen, uh, something has, new has just came out, even the shops, the... the, 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 the the, the, other the, the other businesses coming through. Mm -hmm. So that is why I said, even now, the, I'm hearing people saying that, no, let's go and do, let's go look for the jobs. But they can't, there are no jobs. Being in the tax shop business, this business is not without its challenges. For instance, earlier this year, when the listeriosis outbreak hit, it impacted on their Agota business negatively. And there are other similar businesses popping up right next to them. If you've got challenges, you've got competition, then it's, it's, it's healthy that way because you always use your brains and your, your minds and then you go out and look for new ideas. It was tough because we had to explain each and every day, customer. each and every day to a customer, no, we are not using it. They said, no, 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 don't put this, don't put that. And, you know, but it was there. It was bad. As the effects of a weak economy and high unemployment continue to bite, entrepreneurship in different forms is beginning to make sense for many. If you're now considering going this route, here are some top tips for you from experts on how you can go about this. Here are the five things uh, of a family business that they need to consider going into the future. One, as the, as the family business grows, they need to start formalizing uh, things, you know, entering into contracts where there were no systems and processes, those systems and processes need to be documented. That's very important. Two, because it's a family business, we need to all agree on who is the head, who is the CEO, who is the leader, who makes the final decisions. Even though we are a family, there has to be somebody who leads the family. Three, we need to agree on, you know, we need to be able to bring diverse skills. Uh, we can't all be doing the same thing because that results in us competing against each other. But we need to be able to bring diverse skills. Uh, somebody focuses on marketing, someone focuses on finance and HR and operations. So we need to agree on who's responsible for what in terms of skills. Fourth, which is also very important, is work ethic. 
what you what you usually find in family businesses is that there are those who are hardworking. Uh, they uh, usually put the extra hours and there are those who are not really putting the extra hours. They basically earn but they're not putting their wage. Why? Because it's a family business. That tends to create animosity uh, between those who are working hard and those who are just freeloading. Lastly, uh, embracing technology. It's important that businesses of the future, family businesses, start to embrace and use technology in their operations. Diabo Seto, SAPC News, Johannesburg.